Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today's video it's gonna be about my um, book recommendation. So if you guys are bookworm like me, if you're looking for something to read, then maybe this video will be helpful for you. So I wanted to start off with the reason, the main reason why I want to make this video to begin with. It is this book, George Orwell's 1984. It's one of the masterpieces of contemporary literature, I believe. And obviously I'm so late to the game because I've just finished reading this very recent. I think this is easily one of the best books I've ever read. And if I were to choose only three books that I would read until the rest of my life, this is definitely one of the three. It's really hard to, to describe what it's about without dropping some very big words here. This book was written in 1949 and it's about a dystopian world in 1984. So it's like 40 years ahead of time. It means that it's an imaginary society where people live under a totalitarian government. They are controlled and supervised and dictated by the government. And probably the scariest thing is that people have no freedom whatsoever in every aspect of their lives, including their thoughts. So just imagine that you can't even think what you want to think, but you have to you have to think the way that the government want you to. My favorite thing about this book, I, what I find most astonishing, most brilliant, is that it's like George Orwell. The author has the ability to see into the future and kind of predict accurately how everything would work. And he is also capable of explaining all of those things in the most systemic and thorough way possible. So it's really important to read, in my opinion, because, you know, with all the things, with all the shit show that's been going on around the world, especially in regards of war politics and security. As a normal human being, we can't help but wonder sometimes like why why does everything happen the way it does? So this book would help you understand that. You would think that it, for such a heavy book, it, it should be very kind of like draining and hard to read, but it's it's a total page turner. That's, that's what's brilliant about this book is that even though that it's 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 loaded, it's uh, it's been written and told in a way that's so emotional and moving. And I just I love this book. If you're like I'm not ready to commit to something so grand and heavy, I just want to read something lightweight, straightforward that I could be done with and not have to think about it ever again. I totally get you. I mean, I I feel like that most of the times. So if I want something entertaining to watch, but I don't want to think about what I'm watching, I would turn to some romantic comedy and the equivalent of those are romance novel. Now in this regard, I would actually put Twilight into my recommendation list. Sounds totally controversial. It's, a, it's not necessarily a piece of literature that you would want to pass on to your, to your children or anything like that, but it's really entertaining. I remember I was hooked into the whole Twilight saga frenzies when I was a teenager and you know how teenagers are and just full of full of grievance and angst and um, hormones <laughs> so much drama and Twilight it's the perfect perfect series of book that can address all of those qualities so back at the time I stumbled upon Twilight, the first book. So I read the translated version and I really liked it. And I, I I really wanted to read the second book, but they didn't have it yet. So I had to look online and read the second book in the original version. And that's that was kind of like how I um, I start my my journey of, of learning English on my own. That it holds a certain sentimental values to me personally. So now those are both fictions. Now on to nonfiction, real stories about real people. The Disaster Artist. 
It's also not very serious. In fact, it's a very funny and hilarious book. Uh, it's a real story about the making of a movie called The Room. Uh, you don't know what The Room is. You know one of those movies that are so bad, they're brilliant? The Room, it's, it's one of those. How was work today? Oh, pretty good. We got a new client and the bank will make a lot of money. What client? I cannot tell you, it's confidential. Oh, come on, why not? No, I can't. Anyway, how is your sex life? The main characters of this book are the creators of the movie The Room, and they are they are weird individuals, okay? So you'll have a lot of fun reading this. But I think that at the end of the day, it's essentially a story about friendship. And so even though that it's funny, it's also emotional at the same time. I see a lot of myself in the main character, John, even though he's really weird. He's just such a bizarre character. And probably that, that was the reason why <laughs> I had so, so much empathy for him. The movie, The Disaster Artist, is coming out later on this year. If you want to read the book before it, uh, the movie comes out, then now it's the best time. Okay, my number four recommendation, I would have to look up on my Kindle. By the way, if you like reading, if you don't want to carry like heavy books all the time, even though I really enjoy reading physical books, then invest in a Kindle. One of the best purchases I've ever made. Um, anyways, the book that I want to talk about, okay, it's called Everybody Lies. What the internet can tell us about who we really are. First of all, the title really caught my eyes because remember my favorite TV show ever, House? Everybody lies is practically his his light mojo. Everybody lies. So that was why I was so drawn to this book. This guy, basically, he analyzes the database of Google search. So this book discusses some of those the facts that could be drawn from analyzing that database. Now, what I really like about this book is that it's not just about science and facts and data. It's really about statistics and, and, and science and data. And on that very dry, um, hard to swallow thing, it's a very funny, enjoyable book to read. So now my last recommendation, it's actually not a book, it's a magazine. It's a New Yorker. The story is that I started my subscription five months ago. I was kind of just fed up with reading all the tabloids and I want to and I want to have a reliable new source that I can lean into. Also, I felt like I wasn't reading enough. So I, want, I wanted to have something to encourage myself to read more. It's kind of hard to imagine reading a newspaper, like a physical newspaper nowadays, where everything can be found online. After a while, I just found that it's, so, it's such an enjoyable thing to do. Having like a real actual newspapers in your hands and you can just focus on your reading for a while without being distracted by on the tabs and Facebook notifications and stupid videos on YouTube. Now last but not least, I want to make another suggestion. It's, a, it's actually a YouTube channel of one of my friends. And the channel focuses more on travel, lifestyle content, but it's in English. The creator is a very cool, creative individual who speaks excellent English. My name is Blake, and I just recently had a trip to New Zealand. So in today's video, I'm going to show you exactly what I brought. So if you are in the market for something new, for a new channel to, to follow, then check it out. The link is also in the description box down below. So those are some of the things that have been on my reading list recently, except for Twilight. That's a story of the past. I hope that you find uh, some interesting suggestions that are hopefully not too obvious. That's it for today's video. I will see you guys next time.